that was done and the findings of the housing forum back in the spring. So, Mike Tucker, it's all yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for uh, being here this, this afternoon. Uh, as you recall, the Board of Supervisors uh, requested that Columbia Economic Development uh, undertake a housing study and conduct a housing forum. Uh, we worked with Patterns for Progress, who had just completed a successful housing report for the city of Hudson under Mayor Johnson's uh, leadership. And, and we uh, had participated uh, in those, in the preparation of that uh, as a at various public meetings and, and uh, on an advisory group so that we had the benefit of uh, the work that the city had done prior to uh, us looking at the housing needs in the county. Uh, we held uh, a housing forum virtually uh, on March 30th. Uh, we had over 175 people uh, registered and uh, attended that uh, online uh, to discuss the need for additional affordable housing opportunities throughout the county. Uh, and some of the key obstacles that, that were identified, which I think most of you are aware of and have heard before, is that uh, we have a diverse range of affordable housing needs uh, across uh, varying types, including transition housing, low income, workforce, housing for seniors, and housing for veterans and disabled residents. There's a lack of public utility infrastructure, specifically water, sewer, gas, uh, outside of the city of Hudson and portions of the five towns uh, outside of the city of Hudson and, and the five towns where uh, we ended up with the six sewer districts that uh, could support any type of multifamily housing. And so that makes uh, development uh, challenging. Um, it was discussed uh, that uh, the forum promoted the advantages to the community as a whole of uh, addressing the housing shortage uh, in terms of uh, being able to ensure that the employers in the county uh, have uh, adequate uh, workers and that uh, people had a quality of life and a decent place uh, to live. Uh, we discussed at the forum uh, various local zoning and, and planning approvals that uh, in some instances may be a barrier to housing. Uh, many Columbia County towns and villages uh, are interested in affordable housing, as evidenced by um, several of the groups that have formed in meetings that uh, I've attended on behalf of CEDC. And while we do uh, have high respect and uh, regard for our town home rule, uh, perhaps there is a county approach uh, that could be developed that might be adaptable in each of the towns subject to their own town board and planning board uh, review. We also realize that there's uh, extensive federal funding that's available through the state along with state funding uh, for affordable and workforce housing. And that to be able to pull all of these uh, together and identify developers who may be interested in providing solutions across the uh, various needs that we have, that uh, first day, Countywide task force, housing task force uh, would, was recommended uh, to be able to work with communities, uh, to work uh, on infrastructure where possible, and to work with developers who may be interested in looking at opportunities in the county as well as uh, state, federal, and local funding. In addition to the task force, uh, well, as part of the task force, it was uh, determined that it would need some staff and consulting support and that it should have a firm deadline to produce uh, specific actionable recommendations. Uh, the countywide effort cited uh, in the report from the forum identified that the need uh, for active professional uh, leadership uh, to coordinate this, almost a project manager, clerk of the works type effort 
uh, the thought was that uh, with the direction of the task force and dedicating uh, staff resources to this, that uh, over a period of time, we may catch up to a point where this takes uh, housing, takes a life of its own and that it would not need a uh, long-term staffing. And the, the recommendation was uh, that the Board of Supervisors uh, explore whether or not to create a position within county government or like it did with uh, broadband engage uh, CEDC uh, under a contract uh, to manage uh, this effort uh, in the near and midterm. Uh, and uh, I think uh, some of the other recommendations from the committee uh, included uh, focus on available infrastructure funding, uh, how to uh, identify additional state funding to help existing homeowners to upgrade and repair their homes so they can stay in their homes, not have them uh, bought out by someone who would uh, rehab them and, and flip them, but uh, where state and federal monies would be available for existing homeowners to enhance their existing properties. Also to look at uh, infill in our uh, homes, in our villages and uh, hamlets that are in a scale and consistent with the residential character of those communities. And also to look at whether in towns where, water, where sewer and water were not available, whether two, four, and six unit uh, housing uh, could be built uh, along uh, and, and using septic and, and well water. There was also a discussion of the need to promote home ownership uh, as, as, well as, uh, as well as the other types of housing that uh, were looked at. There are also the possibility of several uh, rehabilitation projects. I know while uh, there's... Uh, you know, at least two groups that have toured the Rojan School uh, as a possible senior housing facility. So with all of this effort and all of these uh, recommendations, uh, you know, I believe that the first two things that this committee should discuss and make a decision on is whether uh, you're in favor of supporting the creation of a task force and, if, and how you might uh, staff that task force so that it can be effective. And I think that, uh, you know, when you look at the example that Hudson has uh, done with their study and hiring Michelle Turlow to come in as their housing coordinator, uh, it's something that uh, regardless of who you engage to do this, uh, I think it would add uh, some significant focus on it in the short term. And I believe that with recent uh, adjustments by the Treasury regulations of the ARPA money that funds could be used uh, for this purpose to staff uh, a housing task force and begin to coordinate and promote all of the. Uh, that's uh, my report, Mr. Chairman, and I leave it to you and the committee and the other supervisors uh, to uh, have some discussion. Thank you, Mike. And uh, like you said, at this point, I think we can just open it up to the committee to discuss and uh, start bouncing some ideas. Supervisor Mussman. I would like, uh, I think Hudson's worked on this for quite a while, longer than any of us. So maybe it would be helpful if Hudson chimed in on what they're doing and how it's going. If you don't mind, I think that might help us. Thanks. That would be, uh, that'd be okay with me. Great. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, we have now had uh, Michelle in our office for about a year now. Um, so we're looking at housing. That's, you know, my number one priority and it's been since, you know, I was elected. And we're looking at it from a lot of different lenses. Some of the items that uh, Mike Tucker uh, named, we are already in progress of, um, you know, getting off the ground. So I'll turn it over to our director, uh, Michelle Tulo, um, to kind of give you a rundown on some of the things that uh, we've accomplished. And, you know, if 
there's any questions, we would love to be an active partner because here in Hudson, we cannot solve all of the housing. And she's already made a ton of partnerships across the county to help out. This housing issue is much bigger than just Hudson. So I'll pass it over to Director Michelle Tulo. Cool. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I know I haven't met some of you. So yeah, I'm Michelle Tulo. Um, I'm an urban planner. I've been in this role for a little over a year. Um, and so in my role, it's looking at housing from a very holistic point of view. So looking at both the preservation of existing housing and rehabbing what we have, as well as developing new housing, um, providing, helping with like uh, connect people to emergency assistance and providing almost like a customer service side to helping residents find housing resources, um, looking at the policy and planning. So like zoning um, and our city laws that affect housing. And then a big piece of it, which sounds fluffy, but it's actually really important is just the outreach um, with everyone from residents to nonprofits, to developers, to other municipalities. So um, in those like five buckets, some of the things we've accomplished in the past year, um, one of them is we've created a housing trust fund, uh, which is a permanent um, reliable fund of money that can, it's unique from grants because grants are so dependent on you know, different causes and have a lot of rules. So housing trust fund, we can use to leverage other funds to help with preservation of housing um, and rehab work um, and any other thing that comes up. Um, we ran our own emergency rental assistance program called Hudson Roots, um, which has helped over about 60 households, um, helping people who didn't quite fit into the criterion of some of the other existing programs. And that's been really helpful for people navigating things like security deposits, first month rent. Um, one thing with that is we had to turn away a lot of people who weren't from Hudson who had applied. Um, hearing from a lot of folks um, in the county who weren't able to access programs like that. Um, something else we're really excited about is we recently won um, half a million dollars to help low-income homeowners do critical repair projects. So we know there are some existing programs like Columbia Opportunities and Galvin and Habitat, but all of those are oversubscribed. And some of them require matching funds. Um, so this is through the state with CDBG. And this is available for county and municipalities every year. Um, and we haven't had anyone to really apply for it before. So we're really excited to get this rolling to help with some really critical repairs. Um, yeah, Claire, did you have a question? No, I'll wait till you finish. Okay. Um, and, uh, and that's something else is we finished our affordable housing development plan in the fall. And that didn't just sit on our shelf because we had that plan, which identified key sites for development. We were able to cut out our quest for qualified developers. And partly because I've been here able to give developers tours and build relationships, we had 11 responses plus more people who missed the deadline were interested. Um, and from that, we've gone through uh, request for proposals and we were working with some developers to develop affordable rental and homeownership housing on city owned sites. That isn't, we're not in the um, publicly announcing that yet. We're still in working out the proposal, but that'll be coming soon. So we can actually begin construction, utilizing what the city owns to create new housing. Um, and that's kind of showing how just when we have a plan, that's great, but we kind of need a person to put that into motion and take the next steps. Um, and then I'll just mention two last things we've been working on. One of them is uh, um, we have. Um, we have been thinking a lot about how our zoning affects housing. Um, and so long-term, we're looking at a new comprehensive plan so that we can like look at rezoning that's more flexible. But in the short term, we have like a firm of consultants that I'm working with and engaging a lot of stakeholders to look at what can we do for temporary provisions or expanding existing zoning districts um, or an overlay so that we can, in the meantime, um, make sure that our zoning isn't um, prohibiting affordable or more flexible housing. Um, and the last piece I just wanted to mention is um, been really working a lot with different folks around the county and other folks who aren't in the county. Um, so for example, a lot of other counties have um, neighborhood or rural preservation uh, groups who are such as Repco or Hudson River Housing um, or those folks in Rensselaer County, Albany County, who do things like first-time home buyer assistance or counseling or helping with 
different types of programs for renters and homeowners. And we don't really have something like that in Hudson so or Columbia County. So I've been working to try and get partners in um, into the county, which is uh, a work in progress. Um, and also working with other groups. Uh, we have a lot of interest in the county for community land trust. So I've been working a lot with folks in Philmont and Chatham and looking at how could that, looking at different uh, land we have available and small scale development projects, you know, two unit fourplexes, how could these things, we could kind of combine some of our development efforts to make a long-term affordability. Um, so that's kind of a lot, but just a rundown of some of the things we're working on. Um, and it's been only a year, but feeling really proud of all this work we've done and really excited to kind of continue this. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll just add on to that, that um, between the projects that we're working on and um, the pro district, which is already um, been announced, we're looking at over 200 new units of affordable housing. And the, the great part is, is that the, the mayor uh, and Michelle have included uh, CEDC and I in, in many of uh, those discussions that they're having in the county. And uh, the recommendations from the report uh, after the forum, you know, did discuss exploring uh, some of those uh, potential new not-for-profit development corps or uh, land trusts and other uh, vehicles that are successful in other areas. And uh, I attended a meeting with uh, the Rojan uh, Housing uh, Task Force. Uh, and uh, they had uh, not only uh, the director from Habitat for Columbia County, but also the director of the New York Association of Rural Housing and also a representative of, of RUPCO. So, you know, as we strengthen these partnerships and relationships and share best practices and uh, coordinate with each other, I think those partnerships uh, will benefit the diverse needs of the 18 towns and four villages uh, that don't have the infrastructure uh, that exists uh, in the city of Hudson. So I think by all working together, uh, it, it's really a very positive uh, opportunity for us. And by creating the housing task force and finding a way to provide it with uh, some staffing uh, and with the existence being available, I think the time is now to uh, encourage this to move forward. Supervisor okay. Adams, you have a question? Okay. Brenda, you're muted. I think Claire had her hand up first, if I could cut in. Yeah, I was just going to, after hearing Michelle's report, um, I spent a lot of time working with Michelle and the mayor and know that everything that they're saying is absolutely accurate. And it's probably the most effort and work that we've seen around housing in quite a long time. Um, and it's not just around development. And I think that that is important for um, this committee to hear and understand that there are other ways to address the affordable housing crisis besides just building new housing. And I think that they're really exploring those avenues. I am in full support of a county task force, and I think that we should be following Michelle Tulo's lead on this. Um, obviously, she would need some assistance, but I think that they are far above where we could even begin to start when it comes to the work. I think they've done the analysis. I think that, you know, they've crunched the numbers. They know what's possible in Hudson and that there is far more possibilities um, throughout the county. Um, the type of poverty that is spread out around the county is, you know, there are homeowners that are in the affordable housing crisis. It's not just about subsidized housing or Section 8 housing or building, um, you know, concentrated housing. It's about people remaining in their homes that own their homes. It's about people in trailer parks being able to maintain the um, maintain their trailers and have safe and adequate housing. Um, the affordable housing crisis is much more vast than a lot of people like to acknowledge. Um, so I, I am on. I'm in full support of a task force at the county level. I think it's far beyond time, and I thank you guys for all the work that you've done. So I, I was going to say, uh, 
a lot of the same things, but less eloquently than Claire has stated them. Thank you, Claire, for putting them so clearly. But the other thing I would say is I think that we are at a point between the needs assessment and the housing brief that Patterns for Progress updated for us last year, we have the same springboard or the same launch point that we need to move forward. What we need is the bandwidth. We need a person and a task force to direct the work to set goals and then to measure those goals um, on a regular basis. And I, I don't know, Michelle, if you, if your uh, goal list was as ambitious as what you've delivered or if you far exceeded what you expected to do in your first year, but um, you really have had an extraordinary first year. Um, and I think we can learn from you. And I think if we were to get these two pieces in place, we'd be in a good position to partner, to be a good partner. So I fully support the idea of a task force and uh, of a housing development coordinator. Supervisor Holtling. Hi, yeah, I'm not on this committee, so I'm happy to wait until committee members had a chance to speak. Um, but I, I wanted to reiterate uh, what everyone has said. I think housing is of the utmost importance um, this, the study showed that we have to pay some attention here. Um, and I think we need to put in the work that is needed. Uh, we as a town are very involved currently in exploring um, housing options here in New Lebanon. So I love the idea of a countywide coordinator. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but similar to the county um, climate smart task force that is then helping towns in their efforts. If there was somebody at the county, um, I already do reach out to Mike Tucker because it does fall you know, under his umbrella. And so to have a dedicated person in his office, which I think is where it makes the most sense to be housed, um, as well as a task force that is working and guiding the efforts of the coordinator and Mike's office um, would really go a long way for towns as well. New Lebanon is one of the towns that doesn't have the infrastructure, uh, but certainly has the need. And I don't think the answer is that we can't have housing without infrastructure. I think there are many ways uh, to do that. And New Lebanon has been looking at them and working on them and our efforts locally. Uh, we even actually are likely allocating some ARPA funds um, to work on this. And our efforts locally would be um, multiplied by having these county efforts. I've also been working with Supervisor Adams as a neighboring town um, because obviously for things like housing, it makes sense, like Mayor Johnson was saying, not just to focus on, on one area. Um, you can't have everyone who needs housing to move into Hudson. You need to have a sustainable countywide effort. Um, and I do firmly believe that it's the job of the county for things such as Bob Gibson's office, um, services, DSS, providing these things. So while the municipalities and New Lebanon is willing to do our share, obviously Hudson has been um, carrying more than their share, although we should all be involved, uh, it really should be coming from a county-wide uh, level and, and output put and stance. Um, and I also nominate Supervisor Adams to please be on that task force because she has such a wealth of knowledge uh, through her work with Habitat and, and other places. So I would love to see a task force with some supervisors, some community members, a representative from Hudson to guide the work and then have a dedicated full-time staff member under Mr. Tucker's office uh, to really guide the work, similar to how uh, Director Tulo has been in Hudson. And when I look at the efforts of Hudson and, and kudos to you, Mayor Johnson, but also the things that you have attained, right? In, in a short amount of time, you have focused. And I think a big part of your success is because you have someone like Michelle focused and dedicated with a board that's supporting it. Um, exactly. But she's there day in and day out focusing on, on housing. And I, I really encourage um, this board and my colleagues to support a similar effort countywide. Thank you. So I certainly force and I support a full-time staff member to uh, to lead this project. And, and a few supervisors have now kind of mentioned uh, CEDC overseeing this project. Uh, Mike, would CEDC be willing to oversee and potentially hire this staff person to oversee the task force? Well, as you know, we've been uh, in some discussions uh, with uh, you, uh, Supervisor, about this, and we recently uh, hired as our senior economic development director, uh, Jessica Gabriel. Uh, Jessica previously uh, worked at the City of Albany Economic Development Office, but also at the 
Division of Community Renewal running the uh, uh, office or the Office of Community Renewals grant programs uh, and uh, her experience in housing over those four or five years she was there before she went on to Empire State Development and OGS, uh, you know, gives me a lot more comfort in being able to uh, work, uh, have CEDC work on this and to between Jessica and myself and working with uh, all of you, the task force, uh, Michelle and, and the great work that she's already accomplished in, in the mayor's office. Uh, I think that uh, we we can, would be able to do that. And I see it somewhat similar to the role that the supervisors asked CEDC to play uh, as it related to broadband and to approach this uh, you know, with some deadlines in terms of the task force recommendations and catching up uh, as Michelle has proven can be done in a one year period to show some results. I would suggest that it would be structured similar to uh, our past contract on the Columbia Forward that uh, you would recommend to the ARPA committee uh, to consider funding for this rather than taking it out of the county's general fund, but also the agreement uh, with CEDC would provide that uh, you know, it would be reviewed on an annual basis uh, over the two and a half years or three years uh, that uh, you would be able to use the ARPA money to fund. Uh, Linda Musman has her hand up, and then um, Chairman Morrell. Thanks, Kelly. Oh, thank you. I I just think uh, Michelle's put a lot of energy into this, and I think in as many ways way ahead of the county. And it would there would be some way to uh, support her, or expand her efforts along with what we're doing. I think it would be to our advantage. I don't know, Mike, how much can you take on? I, I don't know if CDC should be the person, the, the agency to do that. That's, you do great work. I don't know how much more you can take on. Does it belong there? Uh, but I would encourage the county to assist or give Michelle a leading role along with, uh, you know, in this in this discussion because of the work that's been done and and uh, her advice and the information and maybe give some assistance in some way to help her and give her a larger role and coordinate with the city of Hudson. Thank you. Chairman Morrell. Uh, well, first of all, I absolutely do think that uh, that CEDC can do the do the job. I think that uh, they've proven that over time. But I also think that, uh, you know, obviously based on the, the mayor's consent, we would want Michelle on the task force. And I, I, I'm sure they would work collaboratively, you know, together. Um, so, but I would, you know, I would highly recommend that we um, hire a coordinator and hire CEDC to do that. And in terms of a task force that we, you know, we work jointly with CDC to come up with members, not only supervisors, I don't want to make it too supervisor heavy, but also uh, stakeholders. Uh, I think, you know, people like Bob Gibson need to be on that committee as well as, you know, other, other groups who are dealing with, you know, housing and the need for housing, as well as, as the city of Hudson. Hello, can I'm on the phone. How do I get in the queue to ask a question? Uh, go ahead. Hi, my name is Lisa Galina. I'm the new um, EZ for Columbia Green uh, Cooperative Extension. And I have a lot of background in working um, on affordable housing. And one of the ongoing challenges I faced, I lived in Deakin and Newburgh for a long time before moving to Kingston. Um, so I don't live in the county, but I work in the county, is that a lot of the formulas that exist for workforce housing don't necessarily uh, correlate to what our um, community is making. So they often make too much money for a lot of streams, and then others are blocked out of. So I think it's very important to look at creating this in a very localized way of looking at where people are receiving support and when they get cut off once they make a tiny bit more money from access to being elected for different affordable housing. 
I would be interested to know how um, uh, Mayor Johnson is doing that in the city of Hudson, because that's what the challenge in Newburgh and Beacon, that the cutoff mark should be at one or $2,000 a year. So I think it's very important to think about that as you look at the parameters moving forward. Hey, uh, Supervisor Kirsten? Uh, yes. It's been uh, very interesting to coordinate the work of the Rojan um, Housing Task Force over the last year or so, and it certainly demonstrates uh, tremendous need in our communities, and I know that is countywide and certainly beyond. And I've had the uh, the pleasure to work with Mike Tucker uh, in helping to uh, frame the issues uh, and the needs as they relate to uh, workforce and affordable housing. And uh, the work of our group, I think, has really um, been made far more efficient and better in understanding the need in our uh, community. And so I would uh, strongly recommend that we proceed along the lines that uh, have been recommended in the report, namely the formation of a countywide task force and the hiring of a professional staff under the aegis of CEDC. Um, you know, Mike has put us in contact with Pattern for Progress, uh, which has helped to uh, uh, also inform the county forum we had, and that in turn has put me into contact with the executive director for uh, rural, uh, rural affordable housing. And so w without that leadership and assist, uh, we, we really wouldn't have the proper understanding of the issue. So, so anyway, um, my strong recommendations to uh, proceed with the recommendations uh, as outlined. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, you have a yeah. question or comment? No, I just, someone um, asked a question, so I didn't know if they wanted us to answer that question. I, didn't, I don't know who they were because they were on a phone number, but the person who, um, spoke to people though. It was Lisa, Lisa, Galina. Lisa Galini. <laughs> yeah, but Galina from Cornell Cooperative Extension. Michelle, if you want to take that that sure. uh, um so the problem you addressed is very uh <laughs> prevalent. Um so three things we're doing that are trying to tackle this. One is um so both the the, the new development of the depot district and our new proposed housing would also have not just low income um, housing units set aside, but also middle income. So some of those do have a specific income limit. Um, so one of them would be, be up to like 110% of the area median income. Um, but then also some of them would just have a roof on how much rent could be charged. Um, so that's that's one thing called that middle income bracket. Um, a second thing is looking at preservation of housing, like Claire had mentioned how important that is. So we know that um, some of our homeowners are having trouble paying for really expensive repairs. Um, so helping provide some of that so they don't have to take out debt or so they don't have to sell and move. Um, so providing funding for that, um, which also helps people rent. Um, so some of those homeowners, so people in their 30s or 40s who are now buying but can't afford to keep the house, but if we help them stay, a lot of them are also providing below market rent, which is really great. Um, and keeping those landlords has been much more useful than some of the bigger um, outside of the county people coming in buying houses. Um, and the third thing we're doing is just overall trying to look at increasing the supply of housing. So this is more of a long term thing, but not just big developments or medium sized developments, but looking, as I said, like about the zoning, about where can you have a little bit more of a smaller unit in someone's backyard or adding on apartments. So that's more of a long-term thing, but trying to just increase that supply of an infill housing um, and spaces that aren't being rehabbed or aren't being used well so that we can get some more of that missing middle income housing where people aren't necessarily tied to being low income to get subsidies, but they're still able to live in their area. 
Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Supervisor, yeah, I just wanted to echo, it sounds like there's a lot of agreement on hiring a, st a staff person, which I think it will be important. And I think it also makes sense to have an advisory committee or a task force, but it also probably makes sense to think about what the relationship between the two are. Um, I think when we don't have a staff person, that role of that task force is actually like they're the ones who are getting stuff done, which might be like, finalizing the job description and hiring somebody and like coming up with like that first plan for the first two months. Um, but then once we have a full-time professional, um, the role of the task force seems like it'll probably be much less task focused because there'll be a person who's doing a lot of those tasks. And so then maybe it, maybe it's a different committee that sort of functions as an advisory committee that, um, so I think it's worth thinking about what those two roles, like what the roles are of those different things and also what the timelines are um, as we move ahead. Uh, and there may be is different advisor committees for different things. Like the supervisors are going to have a really important role in terms of their speaking for their own towns, but there also might be community organizations or nonprofits um, or like people looking for housing who can sort of give their own personal point of view to be able to provide a, a different kind of advice that is different than what supervisors could provide. Um, and then the other piece that I thought was worth lifting up, which people, some people have mentioned is I think we, the, the success story that we have right now is is Michelle is like the work that the city of Hudson is doing led by Michelle. And so I think it it makes sense for as much as possible and as much as Michelle is willing to increase her scope of work beyond the city of Hudson is to really look to her leadership and her success and that we have somebody in the county who is providing who is like figuring out housing solutions in the county right now who also has you know, who has a professional background of housing beyond just beyond just Columbia County. Um, and so I think it makes sense to look to that leadership and sort of rely on that as much as possible. Um, in addition to the, you know, the expertise that CEDC brings in, but, you know, they, Michelle really has brought a lot to housing and it's been sort of brought up, but I wanted to sort of crystallize this is that the, the Patterns for Progress study went, was concurrent, the one in Hudson and the one in the county were happening at the same time. And so the difference that the, the, the city has gone on to like issue an RFP and have all these discussions with developers, while the county's had a lot of discussions around like, well, what should we do with this thing? Uh, and the difference is, is that is, you know, is really Michelle is sort of that linchpin that has made that difference. Uh, and so I, hopefully we can move forward as fast as possible. Supervisor Ooms, you have a question? So are we looking like uh, for a motion to uh, for the county to maybe form a task force to investigate this further? I, I, I believe that, I mean, we've investigated. I think the main thing is that we have a task force to look in to work on the housing issue. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm recommending that we contract with CEDC to provide the services. I didn't mention earlier, but I think Supervisor uh, uh, Holtling did in terms of we did uh, re-engineer some of the ARPA money to go towards uh, housing. So the, that money can be used to to pay for the services with CEDC. <clears throat> but I think we're be, uh, Supervisor, Supervisor Ooms, I, I don't think it's a matter of investigating anymore. It's a, I think it's a matter now of moving forward. So do you want to put that in the form of a motion to uh, authorize uh, CDC to hire a housing coordinator? That that would be uh, that'd be fine with me if you put it into a formal motion. Could you include Supervisor Rooms um, authorizing Chairman Morell to create a housing task force? I believe that authority typically falls under the chairman. Could it include both authorizing CEDC to hire a housing coordinator and the chairman to nominate a task force and and I, I would just like to say that we in terms of the task force i like to do that jointly with cedc because there cedc is the agency that's going to have to work with the task force so sounds like a motion to me i'll second it all those in favor uh could you think, i'm sorry i don't understand okay so okay so a motion a motion was made for cedc to hire a housing coordinator and for the Columbia County Board of Supervisors with conjunction of CEDC to uh, form and staff a task force to investigate affordable housing. Also, you have uh, 
I'm going to, I'm going to get your name wrong, but cooperative extensions, uh, got their hand up over there stating she had experienced it as well. And, and I would say that she would be a stakeholder that we would want to include right. in, in that process. Uh, you know, and what I was going to suggest is the people on this call, if you know of stakeholders that should be involved or you feel should be involved, please let us know that through, through Kelly or through Mike Tucker. Um, you know, there are, you know, as uh, Supervisor Kirsten said, you know, the road and housing group. I mean, that may be a group that we may want to include on the task force, at least a representative from that group. And, and I know that there's stuff going on in New Lebanon as well. Chairman, could I make a request? Sure. Could I request that you, um, somebody and Mike Tucker, or maybe Mike Tucker, um, prepare a resolution for full board? So this motion's a little loosey goosey that actually defines the salary. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have an ARPA committee meeting before finance to authorize the money set aside in that um, finance committee meeting next week. And then full board has an actual resolution that authorizes CEDC to hire the housing coordinator, a contract between us and them, um, similar to the one we just did for the, the small business grants. We can do that. Thank you. Supervisor Adams, you have hand up. Um, uh, my question was, it has the money, has the ARPA money already been set aside? Because, or is that, a, it, does the project have to be defined and then a request made for ARPA funds? I believe our last ARPA meeting, we had decided th there's a, a block of money, which we included at, at the request of Supervisor Holtling, that we add housing to that block of money, okay. which would have been homeless, uh, I think that there are other categories. I, bridges, I don't have it. Roads. <laughs> roads, bridges. I think, I think, Brenda, once we know the amount for that resolution, the ARPA committee should meet and pull it out of that bigger bucket into a standalone line. Mm -hmm. And then it can okay. go. To That's what I wanted to be clear about. Thank you. Yeah, and just so you know, Jim Bragg, our uh, controller, is on this meeting as well. So yes. he's, he's here. You have, a, you have a placeholder in ARPA that's broadband housing and roads and bridges in one kind of bucket right now. And we have a million dollars earmarked to that bucket as it stands. Okay. Any, any more questions from supervisors? Yeah, yeah. I, just could, could we have some clarity of how the process goes? Just so I understand, I don't, I'm a little confused. Just could someone say one, two, three, four, five, how it's going to work? We're going to have an ARPA committee meeting. We will have a, um uh finance finance meeting that's already gone through economic development so there will be a arpa meeting a finance meeting where we'll have a structured resolution uh that we can vote on which will outline the agreement with cedc to uh hire the coordinator as well as the development of a task force which will all be brought to full board in September. Correct. And then Linda, from there, I think once the, the formed resolution passes full board that lines out the salary, what the expectations of the position in the CEDC is, uh, then Mike's office would, would go out and advertise for the position, hopefully share with all the supervisors the advertisement for the coordinator so we can share with anybody that we think might be a good fit for that. Um, and in conjunction, the chairman and Mike will work on task force members. I know the chairman just asked us to, you know, send ideas his way. And I'd imagine either at the September or at the latest, the October meeting, the chairman will officially then form the task force, name the members and all of that. So, okay, one more question. Is this a job that's one year, two years? Uh, how, who makes that decision? Well, right now it'd be two and a half years based on the uh, when the ARPA money has to sunset. I think it would be similar to what we did with the two FTEs uh, for DSS and mental health, where we're doing kind of a pilot program, you know, funded in the ARPA budget for two or, as Chairman said, two and a half years. See if it gets traction, see if it's being successful. That that was kind of my thinking was it be similar to those two FTEs where we realize that if they are successful, then we will have to budget them within the county's regular operating budget. So I think this position would be similar where we have an opportunity through ARPA funds to try it out and see, you know, how successful it is. And then the hope would be if it is successful to continue it through the regular.
their account. Is, is this a contracted concept or a employee? It's a contracted concept. Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, they would be an employee of of CEDC, but we're going to contract with CEDC. Supervisor Holtling, you said it perfectly. Thank you. Are there any more questions before we vote? All right. All those in favor of passing the, the two resolutions? This would just be the Economic Development Committee. This is correct. Just, this is just Economic Development Committee members are voting here. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to uh, thank everyone. Uh, you certainly uh, have our commitment that uh, we will continue to work uh, with the city and work with Michelle. We've had a very good dialogue uh, since she arrived, and uh, we, we have been uh, in regular communication, and I've served on a number of her advisory groups, and her work is critical to ensuring the baseline of what we're looking at as we attempt to look at the differences that exist in communities that don't have water and sewer. I think uh, Supervisor Cousin made a great point that this is not only about development, uh, this is about uh, assisting people who are already in uh, their own homes or are in need of housing at a price that they could afford. So we do look at this as a, as a very broad uh, assignment with very specific tasks underneath it. Thank you, Mike. Are there I any just, more any more comments from supervisors? I just think this is an extraordinary moment, and I'm just so grateful to all of you for the work that's gotten us here. This is really a watershed moment for our county. Thank you. Would you like a motion to adjourn? I, I think that's where we are at this point. <laughs> hey, the I agree. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Scott. Good night, all. Take care, Mayor.